Hello YouTube and welcome to part 3. In today's video we are going to continue working on a framework. In previous video we have done some work on UI selector class and now we can make UI objects. Okay, but once we have our UI object we can't really do anything with it. We can click it, we can drag it, nothing like that. So in today's video we are going to create some methods here to do some actions. Okay, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and um, start by going to API and we're just going to create a package just to kind of separate this stuff over here. I'm going to say it's going to be an Android and let's just call it some, doesn't matter what it is, I just need to open this up to create a class and we're going to call this class Android. This is going to be our main a reference point actually in a framework. Uh, we're gonna cover it later in more detail for this video. It's out of the scope. So uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a public, uh, public static Android driver, and we're gonna call it driver. And it's gonna be null. We're not gonna assign anything to this. Okay, uh, we, uh, we can just delete this, we don't need it anymore. Okay, and let's go into our UI object and see if we can reference this Android because there was some issue. Okay, yeah, we can. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, if you go to our UI selector, we see that besides the methods with just regular selectors like resource ID, class name, class name matches, and so on, we have an next path. And my screen just went black. Okay, <clears throat> we have an next path. And so, because of that, in our UI object, we need to support both the XPath and UI and uh, uh, regular selectors. So let's create a private method that is going to distinguish uh, between XPath selector and regular selector. Okay, so we're going to call it, uh, we're going to make a private boolean because it's going to return true or false, whether it's uh, an XPath or not. And we're going to name it is XPath. <clears throat> okay, and we're going to return. Uh, basically, we're going to say if locator does not contains UI selector, then we are going to return true. If there is no UI selector in, in the locator here, then it's an X path. That's what we're going to assume. Okay, now moving on to the next methods. And this methods are now going to be uh, public. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to create public. And this is also going to be a Boolean. So um, we need a way in our framework to distinguish whether or not we see some uh, some sort of uh, UI object on the screen, right? Whether or not uh, login button is there whether or not a tab is there. Okay, so we need to check if the element exists. So what we are creating now is the method that's going to check whether the element is exists. So, and it's going to be called exists. <clears throat> and here we are going to do a try catch. And we're going to catch no such element exception. And if it's not, uh, if the element is not present, we're going to return false. Okay. Um, but in a try, we're going to say web element, element. Okay, we're not going to assign anything because here we're going to be doing a check if this um, locator is an XPath or not. Okay. So we're going to say if is XPath then our element is going to be equal to android driver and find <clears throat> element by xpath 
and we're going to pass in the locator that's assigned. Okay, and then else, we're going to say element equals Android driver, and we're going to use find element by UI automator, and we're also going to use locator. Okay. <clears throat> now, once we assign their element, we need to check whether or not that element actually exists. Right, so we're going to return element displayed. Now, the reason we did a try catch here, because, I mean, you could think that you can just, you know, do this. Well, correct, you can do this, but there is a chance that this call right here will throw this exception. And then, you know, we don't know, well, we know that the uh, element is not there, but you have to catch it somewhere later down the road in your framework while here we catch it, you know, <clears throat> right at the beginning. This is the, like, in the root. So we, like, catching it right there as it happens. We don't need to handle this anywhere else. Okay, so our logic is going gonna, is gonna to be solid, you know, in our uh, later tests. Because if we found the element and we check whether or not it's uh, displayed, an Appium is handling this correctly without throwing anything, it can return either true or false here. But sometimes it can throw this no such element exception, it's kind of unpredictable. So if that happens, we'll just return false, that, that, that uh, this element is not on the screen. <clears throat> hope that makes sense. Okay, um, move, moving on. So we need some other methods, right? So Let's create a method that's going to check whether or not, uh, for instance, a checkbox is checked. Okay, so let's do public, also boolean, and cost, call it is checked. And again, we're going to do something like this. And we'll just copy this and paste it here. And we're going to go, we're going to change this though. Okay. <clears throat> Over here, we're going to get attribute, and the attribute name is checked. And here, we're going to say equals to true. So one, once we find this element, and we check its attribute, and if it's true, then we return true, that the element is checked, and vice versa. All right. Um, same thing with pretty much a lot of other selectors. Okay, so. Let me just copy this and we're gonna just paste this in here and let's go just <clears throat> kind of one by one. Okay, so we have is checked and then is checkable. Okay, checkable and basically this is gonna be just checkable. Uh, everything else is going to stay the same. And then we have is clickable. Okay. Changing this to clickable. Okay. And then we have is enabled. And then we can check if the element is in focus, or focusable, rather. And then now we're going to check if the element is focused. And let's see if the element is scrollable. <clears throat> Check if it's long clickable. Oops. 
Uh, let's check if the element is selected. Okay. And now let's start uh, doing some methods that will actually return us something like a value. So let's start with get location. So now we're going to we're going to return a uh, value like a point. Okay. Let's go ahead and copy this. Create a couple more methods. Now we also want to be able to get like text from the element. So we're gonna say get text. <clears throat> and it's usually called name. Oops, here by the way we need to return different element. Um well actually no, this is correct. <clears throat> this is going to be string. Okay. Then we can also get uh, resource ID. Just, you know, if you need to check which resource ID uh, UI object has, we can return one. So get resource ID and let's ch change this to a string and go here and get attribute name and we are interested in resource ID. Okay. And we can do the same for get class name. <clears throat> Just copy this. And this needs to be string. Okay. And another thing we can get is content description. Okay, so I think we have majority of our methods that will return a value to us now. Okay, covered. So we have all of the Boolean values that can be returned to us and we have all of the uh, data values that can be returned to us. So let's see what else we can do. Now let's do some actions, okay? Let's do some actions. Let's do public um, public uh, method that's going to return UI object, okay? It's going to do something and then it's going to return itself. So we're going to say clear text, for example, as a, one of the methods. <clears throat> and again, we're going to check whether or not it's an XPath because the Two different uh, methods needs to be used. Well, I'm gonna create an element as well. So now that we found our element, we can. Well, we don't need to assign anything to it. As a matter of fact, we can just delete that. My bad. Um, we can.
we just do this and then say clear. Clear. Okay, that will clear our text field if there is any. And it's going to return this. It's going to return itself so we can chain the methods in here. And let's do um, method to type some text, right? So public, we're also going to return. Well, let's just copy this to kind of speed it up. And let's say type text. And we're going to do, we need to know what we're typing. Right, so we're going to do string value, and instead of clear, I'm going to do send keys value, and same thing here, send keys value, and then we're going to return ourselves. <clears throat> then we can do we can do a method that's going to tap on one of the elements, just call it tap, and just changing this to click, okay, let's see what else is left. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, um, you know, I actually want to stop right here for this video. Um, we will work more on UI object class, but there are some methods that need to be done that's a little bit complicated and require some other uh, classes to be um, implemented before I can actually explain this. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and create those classes and we're going to create this the remaining methods and the remaining methods are uh, wait for the uh, for the ui objects to uh, uh, pop up on the screen and wait for them to kind of uh, disappear okay so wait to appear and wait to disappear and then we're going to have uh, some scrolling methods there as well and then we're also going to create a timer to kind of uh, give us the ability to wait for um, X amount of seconds before throwing an exception. Okay. So that's in the next video. So, you know, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like it, subscribe and have a good one. Take care.